I got a cue sign from up there. It's just like you know, from our God in heaven <laughs> up there. Good morning. I want to welcome everyone, especially new visitor who haven't seen for a while in the home of our church. So we just take a one and two minutes, just a greeting around you to take a two more, say you know, good morning and say hello to you, everything you want to just take a moment and greeting all over you, around you. It's now. Okay. Yeah, way better. Good morning to those of you who are here in person in this sanctuary. And as so I want to welcome those of you who are, as might be watching online on YouTube and Facebook. It is a good day, isn't it? to be in the house of our Lord. So let us prepare our heart and mind, and uh, let's go to the invitation to worship together. So please stand if you are able. God has made the salvation possible through His Son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We should live as a person transformed by God's love instead of being comfort to the ways of the world. Let us worship as we gather to bring glory to our world God. Amen. Would you pray with me? God, our creator and sustainer, we come to seek you today. We love you and salvation you given us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that this day and in this moment of worship, we might rejoice and be glad in you and magnify your holy name. Amen. I would like to invite you to join together in the singing. The great and mighty is the Lord our God, how great thou art. Right? You may stand. Right, thank you.
introduction to our worship service this morning as we come together to worship and bow down and magnify the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's join now and profess the Apostles' Creed. This is what we believe. I believe in God the Father of Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This morning's scripture reading is found in Job, Job 42, verses 1 through 9. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is that that obscures my counsel without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now, and I will speak. I will question you, and you shall answer me. My ears have heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in the dust and ashes. After the Lord had said these things to Job, he said to Eliphaz the Tamanite, I am angry with you and your two friends because you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. So now take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and sacrifice a burnt offering for yourselves. My servant Job will pray for you, and I will accept his prayer and not deal with you according to your folly. You have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Tamanite, Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Namathite did what the Lord told them, and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. May the Lord add a blessing to his reading and listening to his word this morning. And now tell all the world about love.
Amen. Thank you, Eric. Well, again, we warmly welcome you here this morning, getting towards the end of October, and the colors are popping when the sun is out, and the colors of the leaves are just shining through and, and just showing God's masterful works of art out there that we can see and be blessed by every day. So a warm, warm welcome to Bob Holmes that you're here with us this morning. Let's just praise God and, and his faithfulness. We've prayed for you. We're so happy that you're back and feeling well enough and a hedge of protection that no germs are in that corner. Keep you healthy. Absolutely. So at this time, we'd love to hear of any other prayer requests any updates, any joys or testimonies to share this week? Nancy. <laughs> Mine isn't a, well, it's a joy, but I have to make a correction in the bulletin. We bombarded Debbie. We're so excited that TLC is back in hopefully operation. Um, ideal sing-along will be on the 7th of November, not the 14th. Um, we have so many dates flying around that uh, we kind of got a little over anxious when we did the bulletin. Um, and we are please praying that um, numbers stay down. We're still able to go in at this point we can um, with masks and unfortunately vaccinations are required. But so pray that numbers stay as we can go in and do this on the 7th. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful if that ministry can start up again and, and just touching the lives of the residents at Ideal and, and sharing the hymns of the faith. So yes, prayers that that can be, that can happen again. Any others this morning? Was in for a cleaning of my teeth this week and uh, the dental hygienist um, told me a, a pretty rough story she'd been going through for the last year and a half and she had two brain tumors, one operable, the other not, lost her beloved horse uh, for many years and her boyfriend left her. Well, I tried to console her and I said, well, I'll bring your name to the church and we'll pray for you. She was very moved by that, so I'd like to pray for her. Her name is Belinda. Thank you for your witness, even from a dental chair. That, sometimes that's a little awkward, so we will lift, we will lift up Belinda. Um, I don't know, just for the St. Alana ideal, it, it is going to be in a different um, location where they're going to be sitting, um, so that's why we say meet in the parking lot ideal, just so everybody knows. Um, and um, they will do temperature checks too, I guess. Um, and then also just, um, we're starting the, um, or we're doing the Union Center um, fire station baskets again, so that's a praise. Um, so if you want, if you can bring um, anything like snacks, crackers, candy bars, hot, cho hot cocoa, um, by November 14th, and uh, we'll do two baskets and del I'll, I'll deliver them. So if you have any questions, just um, you can ask me or, or Becky. Um, and also I wanted to um, lift up one of my, my friends from work. Um, her name is Sue, Susan, um, and her husband is Tony. And um, Tony's um, had a lot of health issues lately and she thought he was gonna be home yesterday, but then they discovered there might be another, another health, health issue, with blood infection or something. So just keep them in prayer. I think he's at Guthrie. But um, anyway, just keep um, them in prayer and for everyone. I mean, I guess the hospitals are so overwhelmed and um, with COVID patients and everything, but thank you. All right, well, since it's quiet, we're gonna have a pop quiz this morning. I hope you're ready. So I want you to name this prayer. It says, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, 
that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Yeah, the proud uh, prayer of Jabez. Um, this was shared with me this week um, by a woman whose wisdom and, and knowledge and faithfulness um, prompted her to share that with me while thinking of Operation Christmas Child and how this is our opportunity to expand our territory and take the gospel message to the ends of the earth. So in your bulletins um, for this week, you will see a prayer card for Operation Christmas Child. So if nothing else, if you remember this in your prayers this week, to uplift the whole operation, basically all the churches and individuals who are packing boxes, and then they get taken to a local church, and then from there they go to a distribution center, and then from there they're packaged up and sent to all corners of the earth. And on one special day, it happens that these boxes are delivered to villages for children who may have never received a gift, who have never heard that they're loved by an almighty God, and the gospel message is shared with them and lives are touched. So our little small seed at Union Center has huge potential. And I think we'll hear more about that today in our message. Um, so it just all aligns this morning. And if you've emailed Pastor Jay, it's part of his uh, email as well, Jabez. So it's amazing how the Lord works and comes full circle. So this prayer and this book being laid on the hearts of people. And I've been challenged by this, and I'm going to read this this week. And just pray over this whole opportunity that we have to share God's love with others through a simple shoebox, through a simple shopping trip at the dollar store. And it seems fun and frivolous, but the impact and the potential is so huge. And thank you for um, your participation with it. There's pamphlets and there's information on the table. Um, if you look inside this, it'll give you some ideas of what to include and then more importantly of what not to include. So no liquids or toothpaste, anything resembling war or guns, um, nothing breakable, nothing in glass. Um, and again, if you're not a shopper, donations are welcome and we will do the shopping. Donations are also welcome for the shipping. And they recommend $9 a box. And that not only helps with the physical shipping, but it also helps with um, the materials and the gospel message and the Bibles that they hand out, as well as training those volunteers that go out into the field to do that. So your money is well spent that way. So $9 a box. If it's on your heart to um, adopt a whole carton, they are in boxes of 15, so that would be $135. So whatever is laid on your heart, um, it is so appreciated, and it has such huge potential as it leaves our church and goes to the ends of the, of the earth. So what a wonderful opportunity that we have to be small, but yet have such a big potential. Anything else before we go to prayer time? I know this week um, Eunice Sanford was lifted up um, through prayer. Um, she's had health concerns, um, was in a rehab facility, back to a hospital. I um, believe it's still a hospital that she's in looking for a placement in a long-term um, care facility. So we'll keep Eunice in our prayers. Um, anything else before we go to prayer time? All right, let's quiet our hearts and our minds and, and just partake in some, some quiet prayer. Um, and then we'll go into a prayer in the Lord's Prayer to close. Heavenly Father, how good it is to bask in the silence 
and still our bodies and still our minds and just take in all the goodness and all the wonder that you provide us day by day. We look on the countrysides and at the trees and we just see the, the beautiful colors and we're so blessed by this season that leads us into the season of thankfulness and then our season of Advent. And that as we prepare our hearts and minds each day, we come here to fill our cups, that you would abundantly bless us and fill us over so that all that we do in our daily work and in our daily lives shares and exudes your love and your forgiveness. Heavenly Father, we're so excited to hear of the return of outreaches. And as we, we um, gather items to take to the firemen and women and those that put their lives in danger on our behalf, may the volunteers be blessed by our, by our graciousness and our generosity, and may they receive it with your love. We're also thinking of the opportunity to return to the nursing homes and share those hymns of faith and just return to um, being present in the lives of the residents. We pray your hand before and during and after that the songs that are sung, that the warm touches that are felt would all share your love and your comfort. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for those that do work in in these facilities and the healthcare workers, all the doctors and nurses and technicians and therapists, all those that are under extreme stressors, um, especially now. We lift them up to you. May they retain their health. May they just look to you for strength upon strength, hour after hour, that they're serving those less fortunate and, and ill. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you Sue and Tony for the health issues and the unknowns and the testing. May you hold them ever so close. Thank you for Abby's faithfulness in, in lifting them in prayer. We also think of Belinda and Al's faithfulness to, to bring her to us so that we in turn may intercede for her and ask for prayers and comfort for Belinda and all the the stressful situations that she's in as well, that you would just be close to her and that she would feel your touch. We lift up to you, Eunice, and all of our senior saints, Heavenly Father, that you would hold them close and, and keep them um, in your ever-loving arms. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful and so, so faithful and praying for Bob Holmes and, and knowing that he's strong and sturdy to be here in our midst this morning, that you would continue to be ever close to him. May testing and, and results show positive and show him gaining strength. We just thank you for um, being with that family, being with Lois, being their strength and their joy day to day. Heavenly Father, we lift up the entire prayer list to you for every situation and every person that is listed, that you would be ever so close to them this week. Heavenly Father, we pray for our opportunity through Operation Christmas Child. We pray for you to, to bless us in our giving and enlarge the territory that shares your message. We ask that you keep the evil um, at bay and allow these shoe boxes and allow the gospel message to reach into countries otherwise closed and otherwise um, against receiving the gospel. But Heavenly Father, we know that your mighty hand is upon us and that you will um, allow the gospel message to reach both far and wide. Heavenly Father, we know our, our church is small in numbers, but our potential is so big when we're faithful and that we respond to your leading in your calling. Thank you for the Sunday school and those that are returning to church. We lift up this church to you. May all that is done here in this assembly this morning, 
be pleasing and acceptable to you. Thank you for the message that you've laid on Pastor Jay's heart and his sharing that um, our potential is big. And may we leave these doors excited and just wanting to share the blessings that we've had. Share those blessings with others so your territory is enlarged and more people know of your saving grace and your infinite love towards us. We thank you and praise you this day and join now in the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now our next hymn, You Are the Seed.
I mean, please be seated. Today, our scripture and is Luke, chapter 13, 18 through 21. Luke, chapter 13, 18 through 21. I will read first, then you. And the last verse, we will read together. Then Jesus asked, What is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? Again, he asked, What shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like the yeast that a woman took and mixed it into a large amount of flour until it worked all the through. Amen. As we are continually you know, looking at and our new sermon series, the small bug potential. But today, So we're going to talking about, in these themes, with the seed, a small seed. Uh, have you ever experienced the mustard seed? Really? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I just experienced it through just, you know, sauce, like mustard sauce, <laughs> sauce in food. But it had a really strong flavor and a smell, so it was good enough to you know, dominate and affect all food taste, isn't it? All right. Uh, last week, this we begin is with our new sermon series, the small and but big potential. Why small at this moment? I said. It is our current situation we are facing right now because I see in the church nowadays, many churches and congregations getting smaller and smaller in quantitative and qualitative. Am I right? So zero and a small, as people just think about it, it's just saying that we can do nothing, anything, but in the Bible, and encourage you to wake up your, open your eyes and singing a small thing. It's not a thing that we can do anything with this one. But we can do many things because of sin. Because of small things. So today, it is a talking about the small continually, but with the seed. It's why not? Is it one of the smallest one in the Bible, right? I remember watching is watching a documentary about pro mountainer who had climbed over many super super high mountain around the world. But this documentary was filmed. When he was about to climb the Himalaya, which is approximately about 7,300 meters. A ritual he has followed is absurd, very absurd, but very reasonable. Before he gets into mount climbing, he takes off his shoes and gets rid of everything inside the shoes, making sure Nothing is in it, not even one bit of sand. He says, I know that is kind of annoying and often heard the fellows complain about it, but there is a long way to go. And a lot of things that can distract me along the way, whether it is one bit of sand or stone that can affect my concentrations. Yeah, it is right. In the midst of a climb mountain, we will do. We will never anything can do, especially take off shoes. So one mistake, and I may never be able to come back to this world. 
So I follow this ritual before I climb up a mountain. My takeaway is this. Many people fail to climb up a mountain, especially the Himalayas. But I'm not saying that this is ritual. This ritual helps him to success in climbing all the mountains around the world. However, his attitude toward all the mountains and small things definitely is one factor that makes him so successful. In other words, a great many things are made of small, not big things, more than we thought. Since last week, we've been looking at the what is mean to view the small thing from a different perspective of a true meaning and new vision. These small things have infinite possibilities. Therefore, we cannot just view the small as small, but something that is extremely worth of growth and development. I'm open times be able to observe that such small things grow with a huge potential around. Look at this one. It is necessary for many, for as many people as possible to believe in the zero. Have any of you heard of this phrase before? No? Don't worry, I will tell you. <laughs> this is a phrase that I saw recently, which means until the number of children who died every single day of hunger, poverty, and disease get down from 19,000 to zero, we believe in zero. This is one of the slogans of UNICEF. Zero is the smallest number, literally, but at the same time, it's the most powerful number here as well. What does our slogan look like? Look at the well. Making this sign for Jesus Christ for transportation of the world as a family of a Christian who really willing to be a bridge in the world for our neighbors, our world. This is all the same slogan, isn't it? As the United Methodist Church's mission statement. Is this not another way of a proclaim? That one person who become a disciple of Jesus Christ can change the world. Even one person. Ironically, large companies and groups are dreaming and aiming for small and healthy organizations, businesses, and social communities. Large churches also understand it by playing, placing great emphasis on small groups demonstrating the value of intimate community and recognition that community doesn't happen in a large worship service alone. As you know, as a pastor, before I in a serving in this you know, United Methodist Church, I was served in a really big, big mega church. I mean, in Korea, it was about over 40,000 church members that had the worship service every Sunday morning in five different types of worship service. But it's one day, you know, back then, and a night after worship service, my wife, Mia, and me, I told about, what do you think about? We just keeping and serving in this way? But as my heart, it was emptied. I'm not a pastor, look myself. It was like a CEO. That time, a tinkerbell in my brain, the speaker is always not good enough. Why being small is like planting a single small seed, a small seed, as texts say today because it's yield large fruit that can't be imagined. Therefore, when we look at the small church with gospel eyes, we realize 
the great opportunity for kingdom impact because we figure out that God has a consistent pattern of using things the world looks, look over, overlooks for his glory and honor. Jesus praised the widow who donated a myriad of things, worry talents, small two talents. He blessed the small children, and he said he could only go into heaven if we were like these children. What about this one? He entrusted bigger tasks to those who were loyal to small things. And in today's text, Jesus saw heaven in a very small seed, mustard. This is why we should not see small things as morally just too small. Verse 18, it is what he said. Then he said, what is the kingdom of God like? And to what shall I compare it? It is like a mustard seed, which is meant to put in his garden, and it grow and become a large tree, and the birds of the air nested in its branches. The seed, mustard seeds, a very small seed, that around is maybe one and two millimeters in diameters. Hmm? So it would not be surprising that Jews regard mustard seeds as the smallest seed among seeds. But the Lord always pay attention to these little things. No matter how big a business may be, they also started with a small seed money. Along path was started by one small step. Every, everybody also knows about the huge forest fire that was blazing across Western America last year. That was started by a small frame as well. We must never forget that great and mighty thing all started small things. It's exactly the same question. Did you see the mustard seed? I am not. I've just experienced it through the product like sources. I have a you know, funny story. <coughs> Let me tell you this one. When I was, it's the beginning of my new life in this country, America. It's one day, it's one of our church members invited me to his party, a barbecue party. So he told me, Pastor, would you like dog? Yes, I like dog. What about your children? Yes, they are like dog. Who? Okay, we will prepare two, a dog for your family. That time, I recognized it. Ah, oh, it's not a dog I know. <laughs> so hang on. Stop, stop. I don't like, no, actually, we don't eat. We don't have a dog. <laughs> it's kind of a cultural shock. <laughs> if, you, oh, if you're not yet understand, please, as around you people, there's no. <laughs> it has a unique flavor and a smell, so as just a small amount of that can affect food taste indeed. So it is important to know that being small is not a virtue by itself. Many small things make no difference. However, some small things have a great impact, like the mustard seed. When they get into the ground, they transform it. In a similar way, small church will have the potential for great impact, but only when it goes into the community to reach and transform it for the gospel. In the same way, for God's kingdom and its expansions, the small seed of gospel have been planted in one person, one nation, can become a huge fruit to deliver the message of the Lord. It's because Life inside of this work. 
The mustard seed that can be seen very well with our eyes can grow up to well, four and five meters tall into a tree within one to two years. It's an amazing growth, isn't it? They are able to grow a thousand times bigger. It's because the seed contains life. This is why we are planting the seed of the word of God and the church within the children of God. In other words, we are planting life. As the Lord has spoken, we will grow. Look at your grandchildren. They are so cute and small right now. But as we wonder when they will grow big and talk, start, you know, start to talk. Especially lax, uh, we didn't come to here. We can see their physical growth, but they grow every every single day. Begin with life or grow. Therefore, all we need to do is planting the seed of life. Paul and knew of this truth very well. It means. He was able to plant the seed of gospel without any doubt. He believed in the fact that the Lord watched it over and helped him grow. Verses. The first Corinthians chapter 3, 6 through 18. I'm planted and Apollo weathered, but God gave the increase. So then, and neither he was plain is anything, nor he was water, but God could give the increase. Now, he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive the, his one reward, according to his one labor. Ultimately, he went to Corinth and planted the small seed of gospel, and through some of them, or church in Corinth, was able to be bearded, built. And even after Paul left, Apollo was able to come and teach the word to others. In this way, both Paul and Apollo were able to plan the gospel to the church. However, they claim that one the one who gave the increase and helped them grow was our God. As Paul and Apollos was delivering the gospel and teaching the word to others, the Holy Spirit was working with them, within them and helping them grow. In the same way, for God's kingdom and the increase for his kingdom, the works of gospel work day and night to deliver the gospel. And their work of delivering the gospel is able to plant seed among others. The workers of the gospel able to train and teaching believers of the world. world. As this thing become repetitive, the Holy Spirit allow them to grow. As though there is no need to claim anything as small. There is no need to be dismayed if we don't see immediate fruit because there is a life within us, even though we may be small right now. So we hope you can have assurance that you will be able to grow into a huge, huge fruit tree. One hundred and fifteen years ago from today, in 1906, in a small village in Korea called Gongju, there was a young missionary from Methodist Church from America. His name was Robert Arthur Schaff. One day, he was delivering the gospel like any other days. However, the area he was in was a place that was deeply rooted in Buddhism and shamanism combined. So no one would greet him happily. The one 
All, only ones interesting in the gospel were just a few kids and one young woman. Shortly his missionary activity there, he was back to his home to prepare for the next missionary work in another village. But he knew it was the last mission activity in his life. Who knew? A few weeks later, he died because of an infectious disease called typhus. It was his last mission work. The missionary shortly passed away at the age of 34. The missionary was only able to deliver the gospel to one young woman. But that small seed was able to grow and getting more and more. The woman and his or her family eventually accepted the load and raised the first church in that area. Look at the church. It's the biggest church nowadays in this area. And now, that woman's children and her family and her grandchildren and grandchildren were able to grow up believing in God. A few of them even become pastors. Among them, among of them is saving, serving church in America 115 years after the planting of the small seed. Yes, that one young woman is my grandmother. As a descendant of a person who is indebted to the gospel, I am here to serve you all today in order to pay back the death of light of life and the gospel. Ultimately, just as a small mustard seed grows into a large tree and provides a shade and branches to the numerous birds, the kingdom of God Jesus mentioned is a word that generally enough to embrace everybody. Jesus was great. Every person who met him lived. Through him, people could set free from sin and death. Every person who met him could become free of bondage and changes. He became the shade of salvation and life to everyone. He had a plan of loom to cover all his life. Such a great and holy kingdom of God begins with this very small belief and our practice. Small sin is not a small. We and the church must not forget the small trouble, but never forget that small things are also great potential. I hope that Today will also be a day where we are able to become a precious church that plants this small seed. Amen. This is the word of God for our today. Let us go to our closing hymn today, Song for the Nations. Please stand if you are able and lift our voice to our God as we sing together.
hear the benediction. Lord, even today, you walk through our humanity and small heart. No matter how small our struggle or our love toward the love may seem to be, we believe in the Lord who makes its grow and bear fruit. God, use our small and humble heart. May you God guide and bless the church, church in the beautiful life and faith you love allowed us. May we go forth to the proclaim and the plant the small seed. May we go in peace and all of God's people say, Amen. Thank you.